to saying good morning. Good afternoon, everybody. And thank you so much for coming to this session. I am going to try to share my screen. Starting from the beginning. Hold on a second. And okay, there. I'd like to welcome everybody um, to the session, um, session 402. As was mentioned, it's our last session of the day. We're gonna divide this into um, two parts. The first part of the session deals with the interdepartmental collaboration. So basically the people behind the scenes. And then the second part of the session, we're going to have student voices. We're going to have individual students talking to us about their partners, about their um, experiences with dual enrollment. All right, here we begin overview of today's presentation. Basically, I'm gonna talk about the origins and the goals of the program. Then we'll talk about the intended participants. Okay, one of our students has joined us, yay. Um, partners at American universities, some of our results. And then we'll talk about the student panel. After the student panel, we will have time because we did do a run through. We will have time for questions and answers, should you have them. All right, so I'm going to start um, by, uh, let us introduce ourselves. Um, so let's start with Andrea. Would you introduce yourself, please, Dr. Felder? Hi, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Andrea Felder, and I am in the Office of Enrollment. Next, uh, Shirlene. And I am Shirlene McDonald. I am in the Office of Financial Aid. Mara. Hello, everyone. My name is Amara DeCure. I'm a senior professorial lecturer and uh, a faculty and member of the admissions committee with the dual enrollment program. Gene. Hello, I am Gene Logan and I work in AU Central. And my name is Tux Fashola and I'm the faculty coordinator for the dual enrollment program. Um, the reason I pull these people in is because these are people who have been with dual enrollment, these partners have been in dual enrollment from the very beginning. And every student, I mean, especially from cohort two on, for most of us and for cohort one on, for the majority of us, every student has been touched by these um, by these individuals on this panel. So as we go through the panel, I brought them in and they will discuss their contributions and the ways that they have um, contributed to and affect our dual enrollment students. So I'm going to start with the, um, the reason for the dual enrollment program, I think it began in 2017, 2018. Our Dean Holcomb and Cheryl Holcomb McCoy, there were a number of events that were taking place at American University, um, a number of things that were taking place at um, in DC schools. If you remember, I remember when I came in 2016, 2017, there were a lot of racist charged issues um, taking place the student body president had to be escorted to and from home every day, right? In DC public schools, there were also issues and concerns, stories of teachers not treating students well. And our, our Dean basically decided, she decided two things. She decided first, that the School of Education was going to be an anti-racist institution. I mean, an anti-racist department, right? So School of Education, one of our main foci is anti-racism. The second thing that Cheryl envisioned was that instead of trying to get others to change over and over again, why don't we create our own teachers who can then go back into DC? So she created this program called, the concept was Grow Your Own. And it was that we would have students from DC public schools basically experience higher education and then hopefully enroll at American University and after four years, go back into DC and become teachers. The goal of the dual enrollment program at American University is threefold. The first goal is that we target students in wards seven and eight, right? But basically we want students to have the experience of college before they attend college. The second goal of American University is that we want them to go to college, right? And then the third goal, I mean, the second goal is we want them to go to college and preferably we want them to come to American University. And the third goal is that if they come to American University, we want them to join the TPP program, okay? So um, with that in mind, the TPP program is the, the teacher pipeline program or the TPP. With that in mind, we embarked upon a partnership with the um, DC public schools. Um, our first cohort was a cohort of 10 students. 
And the goals of the program, very, very briefly, is we, we try to ensure that the students have social capital, they have experiential capital, and cultural capital. Social capital, one of the examples, which we'll talk about later on, is that, you know, they, they, they have the power, right? They have the power to affect decisions about themselves. And um, Shalene is going to talk about the appeal, experiential capital, taking classes at AU, coming to AU prepared, ready to succeed, but also being a co-constructor of knowledge in the classroom and not necessarily being in a didactic classroom. And finally, cultural capital, being a student, living in the dorms with an RA, experiencing food on campus, and the list goes on. The program became quite successful. It did so well that Aussie began to seek us out. We finally formed a new partnership with Aussie. Our dual enrollment at American University is very, very um, intentional. We're very selective about the faculty members slash instructors um, who teach the dual enrollment students. Um, we go through a process of, of process of admitting students, which Dr. DeCure and I will talk about. And then um, our goal is not only to affect this school of education, but to affect American University overall. And uh, Dr. Andrea Felder is going to talk about how the um, AU program has helped to um, um, affect not only AU, but DC overall. The final thing that I want to say before I continue is that the American University program is a part of Strategic Initiative 7 which is a partnership with DC, okay? So one of the things that I do as the faculty coordinator every other week for the past three years, I have been a part of the um, um, Strategic Initiative 7 um, meetings. And this is one of the partnerships that we cherish. All right, so now I'm going to hand it off to our first partner to talk about the role that she plays in AU's um, dual enrollment program. Dr. Andrea Felder. Thanks, Tooks. Um, yeah. So as Tooks mentioned, um, this is a part of the strategic plan work, working with Washington, DC. And so we saw this as an opportune uh, time to partner with the School of Education as we think about students who attend DC public um, and DC public charter schools. Um, and so I have been working with Tooks since our first cohort of students to identify students who would be good um, fits for this particular program. Uh, so those students um, who have applied to participate in the dual enrollment program, um, my office, the Office of Admissions, works very closely in identifying those students. We also later on want to, as Tooks mentioned, have those students choose AU as their desti destination institution. Um, so I'm constantly working with uh, Tooks to um, provide information to students about how they can apply to the university, uh, checking in with her, with the students, to make sure that they complete their application for admission. Uh, Tokes reminded me in a conversation earlier, I think one of the appeals uh, for students in applying to American University is that we are test optional um, and that it makes uh, removes at least one of the barriers in the application process for students who are applying to the program. The last thing and the greatest thing I think that has come out of this partnership is the AU District Scholars Program. Um, so we fund 10 students in Washington, D.C., uh, in partnership with my colleagues in financial aid, uh, of course, uh, 10 full funding scholarships to attend the university. So we meet 100% of their need. Um, we also cover loans. Typically, students receive federal loans within their financial aid packages, um, and the D District Scholars Program covers the, the full cost of attendance at AU, so those students graduate without having loans within their financial aid packages. Um, we have uh, guaranteed that two students within the uh, teacher pipeline program each year uh, will be district scholars. Um, and so I'm very happy to continue on with that partnership so that we can increase um, the number of students who are thinking about American University right here in Washington, DC. In a later slide, you'll see some of the results of the work and the partnership that we've um, brought uh, as a result. Um, and so I will turn it over now to my colleague, Shirley McDonald and the Financial Aid Office. Hi, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us today. And I will tell you um, the commitment and compassion and dedication um, of my colleagues that are panelists here um, I believe is one of the major reasons that we have been so incredibly successful um, 
the the saying it takes a village i think this really does demonstrate um, that we understood from its inception uh, that we needed to come together as an institution with um, strategic partners and stakeholders to ensure that we have the foundation to support our students as they're coming in from varied backgrounds um, and understanding that there may be a knowledge gap, particularly in the area of funding. And so my role in particular was to assist students in understanding that, you know, cost need not be an impediment to attaining higher education. Beyond educating them on the process of attaining aid at American, my job was to ensure that they understood what the process was in general um, and that they felt that they had agency around this process. And so um, sharing a bit of my story as a first generation in the country, first generation college student, um, helping students and families understand that there are dedicated people. Um, they have their own assigned counselor, even before their students here, um, that will help them navigate through that process. Not only um, as a dual enrollment student, but as their applicants um, and, and prospects uh, in, in the admissions process. I work very, very closely, um, like I said, with my colleagues um, and panelists uh, to ensure that we are sharing information um, so that we can fully support our students um, and to meet their needs and anticipate their needs. Um, and what um, I am so thankful that I'm able to watch the progression of students and should they choose to enroll at American, continue that support. And there is a continuous feedback loop where we assess every year what works, what needs to be addressed, what are the new conditions uh, that we need to take into consideration. Um, and oftentimes, many of our students and families have no idea that institutions have mechanisms in place to address when circumstances change and their financial circumstances in particular change. Uh, we do have a financial aid appeals process that we help our families and students navigate. And so that's one of the ways that we help our students to gain that social capital um, and that agency uh, around um, their educational success. And so I'll stop there. Uh, and pass it to, oh, yes, so. Yeah, so well, very quickly, I'm sorry, two things, I'm sorry, Jolene. I just wanted you to know every fall, we do a workshop close to Halloween, right? Either right before or right after Halloween, we usually do a financial aid workshop and the Office of Financial Aid, um, Center for Direct, um, CD, uh, Center for uh, Diversity and Inclusion, and the Office of Admissions come together to talk to the students. And as Shirley said, not only for those coming to AU, but those applying to college in general, our dual enrollment students. So the relationship starts with the financial aid workshop. And what that does is they get to see human beings. They don't get to see just a logo of American University. So that when they start to receive letters from AU saying, send this, send this, send this document, I remind them, remember the lady who talked about how she was um, sad when she first went to school? They say, yes, um, Sharon did it before. And when we did the Zoom session, I said, remember the lady whose cat kept walking across the, the um, keyboard? Yes, that's the person who's asking you for this. So it makes them become human beings. They say, oh, that lady, she was so nice. Yes. And so we try to introduce them to AU. And and I just wanted to make, you know, to, to bring that up, that um, one of the things that they do during that workshop is they put not only a face, but a human being and experience to the um, to everything that's going on. And one more thing I want to acknowledge, um, Corbin Campbell, our codeine. Um, I talked about Bonnie and this one more person I have to acknowledge, I apologize. Okay, Jean, take it away. All right, thanks. Uh, Professor Fashola. So I guess I'm here to talk about more of the collaboration piece, you know, for this program. 
Uh, so the first thing that I'd like to say is that this this program um, is a great opportunity for these students to get a little sneak peek into what it looks like to be a college student, right? They come here, they're seniors in high school, they take a, a college class at AU for free in the fall and another college class in in the spring and again as people have said we hope that they do come here um for college but and they have these six credits already as a head start but even if they don't they have six college credits right so part of this is getting um these students acclimated to what it means to be a college student and that um requires a lot of collaboration among many different departments here on campus, right? And I know people like talking about collaboration. People like working together, you know, with our colleagues, especially in this hybrid environment, you know, making connections with faculty and staff. Faculty and staff collaborations are, are rarer than they should be, right? But there are a lot of different offices that work together to make this program possible and to make the experience as seamless as possible for these students. Um, I will say that I vividly remember five years ago when I got the call about this program, right? So as I said, I work in AU Central and I got a call, frantic call um, about the students that were going to be starting um, the next day. They were going to be on campus the next day to start um, this new dual enrollment program that the School of Education had started, right? So, you know, if you've worked here for a while, there are a number of different programs. You know, the university is always looking for ways to partner, you know, to meet our students where they are, you know, to just, you know, offer these other opportunities. So there's new programs, you know, kind of regularly started here, whether they're online or, or whatever. Um, but what is not always happening is thinking about what those programs are going to look like when the students actually get here. So that's what happened five years ago. The students were going to be here the next day starting our inaugural class for this dual enrollment program, um, but they weren't registered for class for their class yet. They certainly didn't have their AUIDs. Uh, you know, just there was just nothing, right? They were here, they were excited, but there was so much work that needed to be done right at the last minute. So that's one of the great things that have come out of this program as far as the staff um, and faculty are concerned is that we've learned how to work together to proactively work to make sure that when these students come to campus that they are registered for their class. You know, it's a small thing, but, you know, other students when they come here our regular undergraduate students our grad students our law students. They go through orientations. They have lots of support to acclimate themselves to the university. And we want these students to have that same good experience. We want it to be as seamless as possible. So we work to make sure that we create an account for them in Colleague, that we register them for the class. Um, as soon as someone is registered for a class, what happens? A bill is immediately generated saying, you know, for this class, what, you owe $5,000. You know, that happens. But again, this class is free. You know, what a great benefit, you know, for this program. This class is free. So we had to go in there and make sure that these students didn't get that bill, you know, that that was covered, working in collaboration with Charlene and her team to make sure that that charge on the bill was covered, working in collaboration with Anne Marie and the One Card Office. You know, who are these students who are asking for IDs? Here's the program. Here's what they need to do. They're only taking one class, but they want that ID to show that they're American University students. How do I access my class on Canvas? Okay, we're going to talk to you about that. So we worked with Tokes and all of our other great campus partners to put together an orientation program um, the week before classes start for this cohort of students each year. Right. And we have students, you know, Tokes, Professor Fashola just sent me a list of students who are starting this program in the spring semester. You know, so we've got some new students starting in the spring semester. So we're going to try to make that as seamless as possible so that when they arrive here next week, they can attend their first college class um, with minimal disruption. All right. So my kind of advice in this short period of time is if you are starting a program, if you're thinking about creating a new program for students, think about what it's going to look like when that student gets here. What other offices need to be brought into that conversation right from the start? AU Central is a great place to start with that. You know, of course, we, you know, our partners in financial aid, student accounts, registrar, one card, all the other offices that are here to support our students. Right. So thanks for letting me share. And back to you, Professor Fashola.
Thank you, Jean. Um, thank you for your comments. I do remember that. A little thing, though, it was orientation they were coming to. They were coming to orientation the next day, um, and but we had not registered for them for classes yet. You are absolutely correct. And so thank you for your help with um, registering them for classes and everything. And yes, we have learned. And um, I'm going to put it in that he didn't. One of the things that he did, he was part of a, a program on campus, and he made it his goal to basically improve the orientation program and has worked with me ever since. Am I correct, Jean? Yes, and we have worked together ever since. So now um, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Amara DeCure, and then we'll share some results. So Dr. DeCure. Yes, thank you very much, Dr. Shola. Glad to be here with my okay. colleagues in this space. Um, the There are three things that I wanted to share regarding my role in the dual enrollment program um, and also how I see this making impact for both the program, my class, the students, and then for myself as well. Um, and I've been a part of this program, I think from, if not the, the first year, then the second or third, it's very early on in the program. And after I started teaching for a year, I was invited to be on the admissions committee um, to help review the applicants um, that were coming into our program. This knowledge has helped me in other spaces on campus. I've now been invited to help admit students for the CBRS program. Um, so this gave me a great deal of background knowledge on how to evaluate students in their, their 12th grade year. I also was tasked with making sure that as we're reading these applications, that we are taking an eye to look for those students who express an early indication of an interest in teaching or doing work in education policy. Um, I, I read those applications with an eye towards, can we find students and help create early opportunities for them to ex uh, experience undergraduate education courses in their 12th grade year. As a faculty member in this program, when I was reading the applications, I'm also looking for students who are able to demonstrate that they could meet the expectations for the classroom demands. Um, with all due respect to what people may assume about a dual enrollment program, this is not an opportunity for 12th graders to shadow an undergraduate class. This is an opportunity for them to enroll. And so there's expectations that these students meet and often exceed. Um, and so when reading their admissions uh, file, we're looking for students who are demonstrating an interest in being able to meet or exceed those applications. Uh, those expectations. But then the other thing that we do, because we are trying to uh, not make this a competitive program, but rather an affirming and an asset focused program, by reading the admissions files, we can identify where students may need some early support from Dr. Fashola and the team to facilitate their continued enrollment in the dual enrollment program. For instance, I remember before COVID working with a student who needed transportation help. Um, I remember teaching this class during COVID and working with students who needed technology support, either a laptop or consistent Wi-Fi at home to be able to log into my classes. Um, or I do remember a student in my first year who needed help with their school counselor to adjust some things on their 12th grade schedule to facilitate their involvement in our dual enrollment program. Um, so I've appreciated being able to be a part of the program before students enroll and being able to help Dr. Fischel and the team to work out some of those kinks that will allow students to fully participate. And then once students join the program, the class that I would teach in the dual enrollment class, uh, dual enrollment system was both the um, Schools and Society, which is EDU 205, and a Social Justice and Urban Education class, which is EDU 270. And in my classes, um, I strongly promote co-constructing knowledge. That means students working together to solve problems, to think through issues in education, for me to present some key facts, but for them to try and connect the dots and make an analysis of what's happening in the field of education. I also try and lead my classrooms using anti-racist pedagogy, which demands that students humanize one another, build meaningful relationships with one another, and work together to disrupt inequities where they see them in the classroom and outside. 
having these students in the dual enrollment program in my class has brought such depth and complexity to our class that we wouldn't have been able to have in any other way. American University is predominantly a white institution that enrolls many students from the suburbs and rural parts of America. Having these dual enrollment students from DC public schools and bring in urban experiences that they're living right now in a K through 12 setting brought such meaningful content to all of our class discussions. These students were seen as peers because we didn't start the semester by saying, raise your hand if you're in 12th grade. These students were welcomed as a peer from the very beginning. And only later when they felt comfortable might they reveal that they were actually in 12th grade. But from the very beginning, they came in with ample confidence and the ability to share what being a student in a real school is like um, in an urban setting. I'd like to think that these students also gained opportunities to build meaningful relationships with their faculty. They learned how to advocate for themselves and to demonstrate agency. They were invited and encouraged to come to office hours. They were invited and encouraged to talk to me when they needed to make an adjustment to an assignment's due date or they needed some additional clarification on an assignment's expectations. These practices help these students see themselves as college students. And as my colleague said, yes, we want them to apply to AU and to see themselves here. But broadly speaking, I just want these students to apply to college and see themselves in college. And I think that this program created pathways for them to do just that. Um, and then lastly, this program has helped me. Um, it has given me more confidence in the work I need to do with Universal Design for Learning to make sure that I am creating classrooms where all of my students can thrive and be successful. And that includes students who are in 12th grade who are in a college course. Um, the last time I was teaching in a DC public school was probably 20 something years ago. So these students brought my knowledge up to date real fast and helped me understand what are the issues that I need to be championing in urban school spaces. And it's given me opportunities to partner with my staff colleagues. I've relied on some of the people that are on the screen here to help provide other information as I support other high school students that are looking to American University as their, their college home. Um, so I appreciate the opportunities that it's given me and the support that it's given me as a faculty member and hope that it has provided a meaningful support um, for the students as well in my class. I'll turn it back over to you, Dr. Fashola. Thank you. There you go. Thank you, Dr. Dekir. And I just wanted to say that um, Dr. Dekir was one of our um, faculty members, one of our two faculty members during COVID. This was the first time that she had taught in the program and she jumped in with both feet. With the faculty members who teach, I check in with them just about every day. Um, one of the few things that we do at the dual enrollment program at AU that I forgot to mention, I actually sit in the classroom with the students. Um, I am physically in the classroom in every class. When it was online, I was online with the students. Dr. DeCourt taught in the morning and Dr. Dennis taught in the afternoon. So I'm in class to make sure, and I, I sit in the back, I don't say anything, but I sit in class to make sure that everything is going well, to make sure that there are no challenges or no issues. I have access to their canvas. And the other thing we do with our dual enrollment program that is unique is just like um, Shirley said, um, money is not an issue, transportation is not an obstacle. If they need transportation, we provide transportation. As a matter of fact, we map where they live and we offer transportation if you live this far or more, three miles or more, in fact, two miles or more, we offer transportation. So it is a whole wraparound. Now I'm going to present, um, I'm going to present a couple, uh, about three slides, and then I'm going to seed and give it to the students. Okay, so I'm going to show a few. I'm going to show a few slides, and then I'm going to seed the students to speak. Synopsis of the results: We have completed five cohorts, and we are currently in the sixth cohort. Our population has been majority minority. Now we targeted wards seven and eight. Wards seven and eight. We do not deny anyone. Our first cohort was majority white. We do not deny anybody. We accept everyone. But once again, based upon what a number of people have talked about, we target first generation students in. 
98% of our participants, and I count the number um, who did not, I would say between 95 and 98 have gone on to four-year colleges. We have about three students who did not. One student did not want to go to college. She said, I don't want to apply right now. She wants to do a certificate program. The other student um, got into a, a, a trade program which is going to yield lots of money. I told her to invite me to her garden parties, <laughs> you know, but the majority of our students, even if they don't go to school here, they go to college. Two of our students have gone on to be posse scholars. So if they don't come here, they're like, I got into the posse program. One is at the University of Rhode Island. The other one is at the University of Wisconsin. Jayla, your colleague. Um, so, and then um, Andrea talked about an 80% increase in DC applications since 2020. Prior to dual enrollment, I believe there was a low number of students who came from DC who applied to AU. One of the things that has definitely helped is the DC Scholars Program. And then as a result of the work that we have done with dual enrollment and the institutional institutional commitment to dual enrollment, we now have another program called the AU Plus Baloo Partnership. I have to spend a second on this because a lot of people, when they talk about the much challenged school, when they say negative things, deficit-based, they talk about Baloo. Right now at American University, I think Baloo has one of the highest numbers of public school students attending matriculated in American University. Um, our first cohort of students is going to graduate um, this fall, fall of 2020. Um, so I bought boxes of Kleenex because I know I will be crying. Um, but anyway, next, these are some of our results and the slides will be available. 100% of the students who applied were accepted into institutions of higher education. No AU dual enrollment student applied to an IHE and did not get in. They may not all have come here, but they have gone. And as far as I know, I think two of our students have attrited, but other than that, Cohort one, all every year, all of the students have been who have applied have been accepted except for one. During the COVID year, a lot of students did not want to be in DC. After living at home in 12th grade, they're like, I'm going away to campus. So for some of the students at the very last minute, they said, I want to come to AU, I want to come to AU the day before decision day. And so they were wait, I mean, literally the day before decision day, right? So they were waitlisted. So um the number of students who has been who have been rejected from AU, who have enrolled in dual enrollment, one. And the 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 um the the advice was come back and apply as a transfer student. Um, but basically, um, this is the information, the number of students who have applied every year and the number of students who have accepted. The first two years, the first year was only public schools. The second year was public schools and we had a relationship with um, friendship. Um, but basically, these are some interesting trends. Wilson High School and Baloo High School have had at least one student enrolled every single year. I'm sorry, Jackson Reed. I have to call it Jackson Reed. Mostly from wards seven and eight. Um, across the six cohorts, 89% are from a minority group, 65% female, 35% male. Most are first in their family to go to college. Um, I think for the first time, knock on wood, um, we're going to have a male TPP student. We have a male TPP applicant who is a dual enrollment student. So yay, we're excited. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some awesome pictures. If you see yourselves, do a thumbs up. This is cohort six in this little corner. This is cohort one. Uh, who is this person? Do you see yourself in that picture? This is um, cohort five. They went through cohort five, and this is on the first day of school. One of our students, yay, Kai. This is Kai along with Mason, cohort five. Over here on the right-hand side, we have cohort um, two. And one, two, three of our students are graduating. They are seniors this year. Chloe is in teacher education, Kira is in teacher education, and Erin is a computer science student. They are all seniors, they are all on track. And up in the top here, we see our other student, Riley. Tatiana, I'm sorry, I will put pictures of you up there. We were going through like crazy, trying to find them. And then we have a few additional pictures. These are two of our students. This is Aja 
and Kai, once again, I take pictures of all of them showing, I use my cell phone, showing that basically they got accepted to AU. So here they are again with their letters and the phone saying, welcome to AU. Over here is cohort five from last year and cohort five and cohort five. So now I'm going to pause and I'm going to let the students speak. We have 15 minutes. We have Riley, we have Kai, Tatiana, and Jayla. So we have four students and we have, um, so I'm, let's give you about two to three minutes each to speak. And then if we have questions, we can take questions. There is something in the chat. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right, let's go. Who wants to go first? Students, it's all about you. Okay, Riley. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, so thank you, Dr. Pashola and the rest of the faculty for your wonderful presentation. You guys are like the literal reason why I'm here today. Um, my name is Riley Campbell. I am a junior here at AU. As Dr. Pashola mentioned, I started in the dual enrollment program and during the, I believe, the third cohort. And I am a graduate of Baloo High School. I graduated in 2021 as their valedictorian. Um, also, before graduating at Blue, I um, published two authors' books with Reach Incorporated, two children's books, and I really wasn't into education that much, but I was doing tutoring with them, so that was like pretty much my only interaction with education. I started out in hospitality, and um, I joined the dual enrollment program pretty much because of the partnership between Blue and American and absolutely fell in love with the program and with AU. And I absolutely wanted to come here after I talked to Dr. Pashola about advocacy and my application product, um, um, I'm sorry, process. It was just a lot going on at that one time. And Dr. Pashola and the rest of the team really helped me navigate and figure out what I wanted to do. Um, so pretty much I was taking school and society and serve, um, social justice and urban education with Dr. Dennis. And as Professor Decor mentioned, the process of or the experience of bringing in my actual um, Black experience and urban experience as a native Washingtonian into a classroom full of students where, like, as I mentioned before, a lot of students at AAU don't look like me and they don't have the same experiences as me. So even though I felt a little bit of that imposter syndrome, like I didn't deserve to be there, I knew that I was contributing to the conversation and to the classroom. And by the time I actually got into AU and was actually in the classroom, I felt like I was more than qualified to be there and have that opinion and have those conversations. So um, I can go on and on, honestly, but I do want to give the rest of my peers some time to speak. So if you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask me. But I love AU. I love it here. And I'm very, very, very thankful for the Dual Enrollment Program. We're glad that you're here. Thank you. Jayla? Jayla, are you there? Okay, we'll give Jayla the chance. Let's go on to who else wants to speak for now while I text Jayla. Hello, I'm here. Sorry. Oh, Jayla, there she is. Okay, let's go, Jayla. Right. I definitely agree with Riley. Yes, I definitely agree with Riley. Of uh, first feeling that imposter syndrome, but then feeling acclimated to an environment, and I instantly did fall in love with AU campus. With it being close to home, and an actual college campus where I can go to different buildings and get used to the different buildings and get familiar with where my future classes will be and getting familiar with the student engagement and being involved more easily to the environment. So yes, I definitely thank the program for helping me prepare in that type of way, but not only preparing me for the environment, adapting to the environment, but also adapting to like what college, what college classes would be like, because as a high school student, you're unsure and afraid of the workload, but actually it just like calmed down my nerves being a part of the dual enrollment program. Jayla, so Jayla and Riley and one more student who's gonna identify herself, but both of them are also district scholars, aren't you Jayla? Oh yeah, yes. And then do you wanna talk for a, a few seconds about your participation with Dr. Noemi in the, um, with the uh, research program that you did? Community sure. research? Uh, yes. My community. I know that was freshman year. <laughs> oh. You did some work with oh, community yes. research. Also, oh, yes. I was also, for my freshman year, I decided to be a part of the community based research college um, scholars with. Um, 
guess prof um, profi professional me. It was a great time um, being a part of that cohort as well as the district scholars cohort and um, being able to do community service and research within my community. So it was as if I was contributing back to my community. And Jayla, what's your major? My major is psychology. Thank you. All right, we're going to move over to, let me see, Tiana or Kai, who wants to speak? I'll go. Okay, Tatiana. Okay, so my experience with the dual enrollment program was amazing. I think it kind of filled the gap between high school, senior, and college. And I cannot, like, I can't, like, express how grateful I am for the program because I always think that there should be some type of um, program in between, like, college and high school because it's such a different, like, I guess, I guess experience for both. I mean, I, as a high school student, you're still a, like a kid. And I think um, dual enrollment was like a chance for me to like be more mature. And it was like, I was going from high school and then it was just a bunch of kids and then to a college where like the kids don't really say anything. And then we're just like, oh, hey, like, did you do the assignment? But <laughs> yeah, I think it's it's interesting to like um, be in college and high school at the same time, it can, it can get like a little, uh, I don't want to say hard because it was never hard because it's always someone that you can look to for help. Like Dr. Fasola said, she was, she's always in the class and then, um, I'm kind of quiet. So <laughs> I don't really talk. And she was just like texting my phone. Like, do you want to say anything? You know, you you belong here. Like always consistently, consistently reminded me that I belong here. And for a long time I did struggle because I will, I went to an all black, well, I I wouldn't, it was majority black people in my high school. So that change from an all black high school to like a majority white institution, it was really hard for me. Like, um, I did struggle, like thinking like, oh, maybe like, do I really belong here? But I always had Dr. Schiller in my corner. So that's good. And then also Dr. Jennings was a huge, huge help. She was amazing. Thank you. And mm -hmm. um, Tatiana, you are a teacher pipeline fellow? Teacher yeah. pipeline? Yes. Tatiana and Riley. Kai. Hi. Um, I'm a freshman within a with at a American. Um, I'm a computer science major and I'm also also went to Blue as well. And I'm a dual enrollment uh, student and a district scholar as well. Um, I think that the one lesson that I learned throughout, well, I learned a few lessons throughout dual enrollment, but the one lesson that I learned that was more so crucial was time management within dealing with my classes and dealing with my high school classes and trying to, you know, manage my life throughout, like, you know, applying for college and making sure that I have all my, like, applications through and everything. So I feel like that having Dr. Fashola and the entire support system that I had, being my family, being at American, helped greatly with the way that I went through the process of uh, my senior year. Also, um, just being in an education class taught me so much. Though I didn't go that route, um, it was a lot of information I could apply to what I went through when it comes to being within the public school education um, that became very valuable and gave me a better perspective on, um, on the education system itself. Um, but the application processes when they came to other colleges were really, really easy be due to the help that I already had and everything. But so far, um, <clears throat> excuse me, my experience at American has actually been pretty good. Um, it has its faults and, you know, you have to adjust which culture shock. But um, I've been managing so far, especially with coming from Baloo, coming to American University, which is a really big shift. So, yeah. Yeah, thank you. So can I just ask you guys, um, anyone talk about navigating, right? So I was talking to one of you the other day and the person said something about um, an academic coach and talked about the writing center, right? So access to different resources. Does anyone want to talk about that? Yeah, I can talk a little bit about the writing center and also um, an academic coach. So 
and my academic coach was amazing. Um, and I still like talk to her from time to time because I don't think like even though like you may not be having any issues academically, you can still like reach out just in case like you ever need anything. So um, with the writing center, she actually introduced me to the writing center and I was like, mm, I don't know if I want to go there, but, <laughs> you know, I'll try it out just in case like I ever do really like want to go. So uh, I tried it out once and it was amazing. Like we kind of, it was, it was finals week and I had so many essays to write. She was helping me come up like with, like break it down to where I, I, she helped me break it down to where like I could um do like one thing like one way and then help me like come up with questions to answer like one part and then it was just really amazing like I think the writing center is is really underrated and students might think oh well I don't need help with writing but you can always like go there and like give revisions or something but it's pretty amazing. Um, I want to conclude the questions and answers, and I just I want to thank everyone for being here. Um, somebody talked about it takes a village. I've heard that a lot. This is the group, the people who presented earlier. You have been you are touching these students who are speaking. Students who are speaking, you have absolutely been touched. Absolutely been touched by the different sent by the different um the different um uh, departments and organizations that are speaking here on the panel today. We love our dual enrollment students, but love is not enough. We want to we want to empower them, and we want to ensure that they succeed. Belonging here is not good enough if you are not successful, if you're not able to navigate, and if you do not have if we do not have advocates. And so we follow the students all the way through. I check on them every semester. How are you doing? Do you have any challenges? What's going on? Do you need any help? And one of the great things about this institution is that we're always there is always someone, no matter what part of the individual may or may not be having issues or may or may not be celebrating, there is somewhere on campus that they can go to that can help them. I want to recognize Carlos Gamez also, my graduate student assistant. Thank you so much for helping to put the different things together. And um, once again, I had mentioned earlier, and I'll mention it again, Bonnie Berry, I talked about transportation. Bonnie Berry is the person who provides our transportation. She makes sure that the students, we, we either do Lyft or we have a traveling service. But for a number of students, um, you know, you talk to some parents and they say, we live across town. It's going to take forever for the students to get there. I don't have it in my bandwidth. And um, I, think, I think for the past five years, because we started it, I think during the second year, Bonnie Berry has been devoted and dedicated to ensuring that the students arrive at AU and leave safely. There are no challenges or there are no concerns about, are my children going to be safe? In the past, when we recruited prior to having transportation, some parents would say, I'm worried that my child is not going to be safe. We have one minute left, but I'm going to stay on. Are there any comments or questions? Is there anything in the chat? But I wanted to give everybody a chance to speak. Thank you for coming. Any comments? I'm trying to, I'm going to stop the share. So in conclusion, if there are no comments or questions, as you can see, it's tough. You know, my first introduction to uh, financial aid was not, we love you. My first introduction, um, it was, it was rocky, you know, and Cheryl said, no, Tokes, they will be our friends. And I said, well, maybe she says, no, they will be our friends and we will invite them. And so I did, as Jean said, my first introduction to Jean, uh, he got this panicked call. Students are coming on campus tomorrow. We're coming for, for orientation and all that stuff. But I think one thing that has been successful is basically understanding that we put the children first, we put the students first and we are able to work together. The second thing is that we're able to change our systems. So if there's something that we're doing that does not work, we're able to work on it and fix it and work together and say, maybe we should do this. Maybe we should do that. So I thank everybody. And I thank Jean Logan, my, um, my um, co-conspirator in terms of um, arranging for the students to be registered, to make sure they don't get any loans, to make sure that they don't have any finances or anything like that. But it truly takes a lot of hard work. I refer to us as ducks. We're soft, we're cool on the upside, but on the downside, we're going like this, right? But um, I reach out to all of you and I say, thank you very much. So I'm going to, if, you, if there are no questions, I'm not gonna go off, but I'm going to 
to um, a facilitator. And I'm, yeah, I'm going to yield to the facilitator. And there's a copy of this. We have a newsletter that we send out every year. Every We try to send one out each semester. If you're interested in getting a copy of the newsletter, send an email to me at fashola at american.edu and we can send you copies of the newsletters. Students, I'm so proud of you. Colleagues, thank you for this. I really appreciate you. And people who came, thanks for coming to learn about our program. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Hi, thank you, everybody. So do I, do I leave or do I stay?